Greetings children of the screen, your friendly neighborhood nerd scum here once again, coming at you with another quick thoughts video. Today focusing in on Justice League No Justice number two by Snyder, Tinian, Williams, and Manipold. Man guys, the first issue of this book, I really dug it. I know not everybody did, but I really did, and I was so excited for this one, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So we start off this issue with Amanda Waller headed towards the Fortress of Solitude when all of a sudden she is intercepted by Oliver Queen Green Arrow, who demands to know what's going on. And at this point, she basically informs him that this is actually all her fault because, spoilers guys, in the previous issue, she killed Brainiac, which set off his failsafe device. Then we cut back over to the planet of Kalua, where the assembled New Justice League, including Justice League members, some people from other teams, as well as some villains, are thrown on the planet as these giant ancient gods from beyond the source wall tried to destroy and devour it. Uh, they are basically being attacked by all of the pe homeworld people of Kalua, of Brainiac's people, because they are programmed to destroy anything that even is remotely resembling Brainiac, as he's the greatest villain of their planet. And even though the Justice League is like, hey, we're just trying to help, they're like, yeah, whatever. Brainiac sent you. Why would we believe that you would help us? As our heroes and villains try to band together, their internal squabbles keep pulling them apart when finally Lex Luthor and Martian Manhunter just lay it down for everyone. Hey guys, this is what's going on. Brainiac had the fail safe, so if this world dies, Earth is next. We need to put aside all the bullcrap and we have to work together. Superman agrees, Batman agrees, so they basically all decide that Brainiac had a plan, so they're going to do their best to fulfill that plan. All of them were split up into specific teams, and the iodes on their, or sorry, the nodes on their suit are basically drawing them towards the four different elemental powers that they need to balance in order to keep the planet from being devoured. So they split up into those teams, and they head out to do their missions. Back with Amanda Waller and Oliver Queen, they've decided to begrudgingly work together as Oliver Queen reveals that not long after the Justice League disappeared, all of the other heroes of Earth went dormant. He doesn't know where anyone else is, it's just him and her. So they make their way to the Fortress of Solitude and eventually find their way to the, like, the cosmic egg or whatever that is buried in the Earth, only to find that it is no longer dormant, it has been activated, yet another failsafe by Brainiac, and the planet is essentially screwed. So then the rest of the book pretty much plays out as an extended action sequence where we have the four different teams approaching these four different celestial trees on this planet that are the embodiments of these four cosmic energies. And all of them are basically trying to either penetrate the barriers around it or fight their way in through the mechanized guards, and all of them are having a really tough time. However, then we get our biggest reveal of the book. So again, spoilers, guys, if you have not gone out and picked up the book and you don't want this ruined, definitely go and pick it up. One of these main trees is a prison. It is the tree for Entropy, which is the team with Batman, Lobo, Lex Luthor, Deathstroke, and Beast Boy. And in this prison, no matter how many inmates they release in order to try to balance the energy, they find that it's not working. So eventually they go to the deepest core of the prison and they find the ultimate prisoner of Kaloa, and it is... Brainiac's son. That is right, Vril Dox, Brainiac 2.0. And that is where this book ends, guys. Right on, guys, and that is Justice League No Justice number two. And man, it was awesome. I know not everybody's going to feel that way, but I really, really enjoyed this issue just as I did the first one. I know that a lot of people have been comparing it to the Avengers book, which I've also done a video on, and yeah, the basic stories are the same, but what I really love about No Justice is despite the fact that they have a much larger roster of characters, the majority of those characters between this issue and the previous issue have all really gotten really great character moments, whereas I feel the Avengers book is not really... The, in, in issue two, they're all still fighting each other instead of teaming up to take on the main bad guy of the series. But again, this is four issues. That might be longer. It's not fair to compare them. Either way, I really enjoyed this issue. So this week, this book is going to be getting four out of five GGs and a definite recommend. But that's just what I thought. What'd you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, please leave a like and share it with some friends. That's more important now than ever with everything YouTube has been changing up on us small YouTubers. And if you're not subscribed, then please subscribe and hit that little bell so you can get notifications on all the dope videos I'll have coming out in the future. Also, guys, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I will have the links for that in the description below. As always, thank you very much, children of the screen. I hope you all have a good one. Nerd Scum, out.